Okay, so um, here we have uh, the data set of the baseline intra blood pressure measurements of 206 patients. And um, this is just the simulated data. This is not real data. Um, so um, the basic statistics uh, will be a little bit different because this is kind of a, you know, randomly generated using computer. Um, however, for the sake of the, um, the illustration, um, it doesn't really matter. So you can find this file from GC Learn. So uh, if you haven't done so, please open the file in Jamovi. And name the variable um, as you see fit. So um, the name of the variable is IOP. And then uh, there's a little description saying baseline IOP. So that's what I put. but you can just change it as you see fit. Um, obviously, this is a continuous uh, variable. Um, more specifically, this is a ratio level of measurement. And before we run the one sample uh, T test, let's just look at the data uh, with exploratory data analysis. So descriptives. Um, so statistics, I'm pretty sure there's no missing, medium mode, quartiles, standard deviation, histogram, and box plot. So if you move the variable, right, so the number of data sets are 206, that uh, means 23.5. Um, well, that's close enough and standard deviation is a little smaller than before and in the lecture it was 1.654 but uh, for this data set it's a 1.53 and if we look at the histogram looks like the data are normally distributed um, looks quite symmetric around the center and this is the box plot and we only have two outliers at the two tail ends, but that's not going to be uh, a problem. So let's run the um, one sample t test using Jamovi. It is very simple. So here we have t test, right? Um, in practice, t test is actually used to compare two um, different sample means. So two group sample means. Uh, but, you know, almost always by default, t-test is used to compare groups or um, the, the group means, basically. But in this case, even though we do not have two groups, uh, we have only one sample, right? But then we are actually comparing the sample mean against something else too, right? So there are two values involved in this too. So let's just um, run the one sample t-test. Here we go. So our dependent variable is IOP. So this is the only variable uh, we have uh, before we move that. Um, so it's a student's um, test. So this is just by default. We're going to use this. Um, indifference, text size. Uh, we're going to just leave it that. Oh, and it can even give you the descriptive statistics of that variable and the test value so the cutoff value is 21 right and we're testing if our um, sample mean is greater than this test value so we're going to choose this um, so we're going to just uh, talk more about this uh, direction of the hypothesis um, you know in our case we are actually running the uh, directional hypothesis we're testing the directional hypothesis where you know, your sample mean is either bigger or smaller than a certain cutoff value. So these two, these last two is representing the what is called directional hypothesis testing or one-tailed hypothesis or one-sided hypo hypothesis testing. Whereas you don't care about, so when, when you don't care about the direction of the difference, right? As long as it's a statistically different, um, then this test is called um, two-tailed 
uh, hypothesis testing, right? So you don't care about the direction of the difference as long as they, uh, the, the, the difference is statistically significant. So um, I think we're ready to test. So move the WP variable. Then here's our statistics. Again, because of a you know, slightly different um, you know, standard deviation and the mean, we have a different um, T statistics. So this is the actual T statistics with the degrees of, of a freedom 205, right? So it's n minus 1. So 206 minus 1 is 205. And the p-value that you will see in this statistics as big as this one or more extreme is less than 0.001. So basically this is a very very small value but it's just enough to say that this is um, you know, smaller than the, um, the, the level of significance alpha, right? It is not that they um, set their level of significance at 0.001, but in practice, when the p-value is just you know, very small, they use um, you know, a couple of nominal uh, level of significance uh, just to display that this is a significant result, right? So among those, 0.05 is one of them, and 0.01 or 0 0.001, 0 0.005, right? That is just a way to say that this result is significant, okay? And here's some um, summary descriptive statistics here. So the number of data sets are 206, mean is 23.5 millimeter mercury, median is almost the same, and then standard deviation is this, and standard error of the mean is this. So if you divide the standard deviation by the square root of this, then you're gonna get the standard error of the mean. So here, because the p-value is less than alpha 0.5, so that is your level of significance, right? So, and it is even smaller than alpha 0.05, so that means you reject the null of no difference. So basically you can say that you have very strong evidence that uh, the average patient's intracranial pressure is indeed greater than the cutoff value of 21 millimeter mercury. So that is uh, the conclusion of this null hypothesis significant testing. Okay, so um, here is our um, visual acuity data of 16 clients. So let's just run the uh, one sample T test. So go to analysis, T test, one sample T test. Now it is still students and we want to have descriptive statistics and the test value is zero, right? The zero log mar, so we just leave as it is. And because this is a two-tailed um, testing, we can um, leave the uh, default option as it is. And now we can move the VA data. And this is our um, one sample t-test result. So the statistics is 2.45. And this is what we calculated, actually. And then the degrees of freedom is uh, 15, which is 16 minus 1. And the two-tailed p-value is 0.027. Remember, um, we calculated the, uh, the one-tailed p-value, which was 0.013. So it is about right, right? If you just multiply by 2, then you'll get this two-tailed uh, two p-value. And then you compare this p-value against alpha 0.05, right? So alpha 0.05 is greater than this p-value. So what that means is the p-value is less than alpha 0.05. That means we reject the null of no difference, right? So we have a strong enough evidence um, to 
to say that on average, uh, the patient's, uh, the client's uh, best corrective visual acuity is actually different from the optimal level, uh, which is 6.6 six vision or um, 0, 0.0 log more. So here is the descriptive statistics of the visual acuity of those 16 clients. So the main difference from the, uh, the testing value is just a 0 0.05. However, this difference, this much difference, actually is statistically different, right? Um, so maybe um, it is not practically different, but still this, this is a telling us that there is a significant difference um, in the best corrected visual acuity from the optimal um, log bar of 0, 0.0.